nitrogen. You know, it's an essential part of the amino acid package. It's the building block of the proteins and enzymes in a plant. Really needed a lot in corn, really needed a lot in rice, cotton, same way. Actually, soybeans produce their own through nodulation. So I can only make about 80, 85 bushel beans with the amount of nodules that it's gonna make for itself. So at some point, I gotta figure out a way that I can add to that. If we can use micronutrients like moly, iron, copper, uh, even a, one that nobody talks about, cobalt, they all help in that nitrogen processing. And once we start processing nitrogen efficiently, we don't need as much as we thought we did. You know, you've heard the saying, too much of a good thing. Well, that's kind of where you can be with any nutrient. But nitrogen is one of those that we're learning through our sustainability efforts that can be reduced. You know, nitrogen is pretty easy to leach. It's pretty easy to run off. So when you're farming in those really deep, sandy, beach-type soils, when you put out nitrogen at the wrong time, get big, heavy rains on it, it's going in the ground or it's running out the end. It is one of the most strategically managed nutrients that we use. What you need to be careful with is, is if you front load nitrogen on soybeans, you're gonna get a giant leggy plant, super tall, and then it's gonna end up making all this foliage, it's gonna fall over, and it's gonna not stack your, your nodes. Like your nodes will be this far apart. I wanna stack them you know, an inch apart and stack, 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 stack all the way up it. Because you, if it's high yield situation, those plants get heavy, they fall over and they break. We need to process the nitrogen, make it do what it's supposed to do in that plant, and we use micronutrients that are key in the enzyme reactions of that nitrogen processing in the plant. So that's, when somebody asks us, how can you tell? Well, what we're learning is you can. You gotta use certain testing methods to find that out and then employ right products, help us alleviate the issues. Now with nitrogen on soybeans, the problem is, is if you go out there and let's say you use chicken litter or you use some other form and you get too much nitrogen out there on soybeans, what you can do is one, you can make the plant lazy and it's not gonna nodulate at all. It's not gonna put anything on there where it's gonna make its own nitrogen because you just made the plant way too lazy. So how to do that is, is if you're gonna put some down, you can strip till it and you can strip till it down real deep. So by the time that it gets to it, it's in the reproductive stage, and that's when you're gonna want your nitrogen anyway. We figured out what we think the best thing to do is spoon feed it. We don't go eat all of our food at breakfast. If that works for us, that should work for plants too, so we spoon feed. We do that with our other nutrients too, but nitrogen is probably one of the, the biggest ones that we do that with and we get the most benefit from. But keep in mind, you gotta figure out a way that you can feed that into the plant closer to the reproductive stages. So when you're reproductive, you're making pods, beans, blossoms, all that. In vegetative, you're just making vegetation and biomass. We don't sell biomass. We sell the seed. That's how we gotta figure it out.